The Adventures of the Scarlet Cloak, starring Wendell Niles. This is a story of the Golden West, as it was more than a hundred years ago. A land of mystery and intrigue. A romantic paradise where the dons and senoritas held to their ancient customs while rubbing elbows with rugged American frontiersmen and pioneers. Where lace-trimmed handkerchiefs from Barcelona were carried next to the heart under crude buckskin jackets. The territory was a melting pot, quiet on the surface like the Pacific, but torn with undercurrents and riptides. It was a restless and growing land where the strong made their own laws and the weak obeyed or perished. This is the saga of Brad Carver, a fabulous man in a fabulous land. Some called him an angel. Some called him a devil, and many claimed that he never lived at all. But the story of Brad Carver is as colorful and exciting as were his roaring guns and flashing rapier as he cut a flaming swath through this glorious land. Our story starts in October of 1842, as a dusty and battered wagon train at the end of the Santa Fe Trail paused within sight of a settlement of 200 people. Oh, hold your teams, hold them! So we made it, Carver. Los Angeles dead ahead. So that's Los Angeles. Doesn't look like much, McKeever. Well, I guess it ain't Boston, Carver. But it's going to be a mighty big city one day. And it looks good to me right now after 3,000 miles of prairie and engines and mountains and desert. It still doesn't look like much to me. Well, it's where you and I park, McKeever. Where are you striking for? North. Monterey. I'm heading north myself, San Francisco. As soon as I get these folks in and settled. I'll ride along with you if you're willing. Sure, McKeever. Thought maybe you'd had enough of me. Look, Carver. When we started out, you was just another Boston tea drinker to me. But back there on the trail, you proved I was wrong when the going got rough, and I'm admitting it. So do we ride together, or don't we? We ride together, McKeever. Good. We'll hit the trail as soon as we get the train into town. Come on! We're moving! Get up, everybody! Get up! I ain't one for asking a man questions, Carver. But you're in a powerful hurry to get to Monterey. I haven't been there in 20 years. I've got an old score to settle. Old score? You couldn't have been more than a kid 20 years ago. I was old enough to remember my home on fire. My mother and father murdered. I'm sorry, Carver. Couldn't be a bad country. You're lucky they didn't get you. They would have, except for the loyalty of a Mexican named Sancho who worked for my family. I don't know what happened to him afterwards, but he got me to San Francisco and put me on a ship that took me to my father's people in Boston. You know who murdered your folks? No. They rode in at night with their faces covered. My father wounded the leader through the shoulder with a rapier, and one of the mob stabbed him in the back. I've got to find the leader. Well, it won't be easy. He may be dead by now. He may be. But if he isn't, he'll carry a rapier mark on his shoulder. If that man is alive, McKeever, I'm going to find him and kill him. Now I know why we've been knocking on these ponies. We'll switch mounts at the next station. I want to stay on the trail all night and make Monterey by dawn. All right. Get up there, boy. the house? Near that grove of trees? Yes. What's left of it? My uh, mother and father are buried in the grove down there. That's the only news of them I ever had. Well, goodbye, McKeever. If, uh, if I thought I could help... Thanks. Uh... It's my fight. I want to go down into the grove and uh, be alone for a while. If you... If you ever come up to San Francisco... I'll look you up. I promise. 
Goodbye. And good luck. Goodbye, McKeever. Yep, there, boy. Take care. J. Carver, 1785-1822. Priscilla Carver, 1795-1822. Dear Lord, blessed be their memory. Senor... What are you doing here? I, I just come to place the flowers on the grave, senor. The, the, these people, they were my friends. Sancho. You you must be Sancho. Si, si, senor. I am Sancho. But I, I, I do not recall ever seeing this senor before. Sancho, you remember me. I'm Brad Carver. Bradito? You, you are the little Brad Carver? Oh, senor Brad. Don't call me senor. Not you, Sancho. I knew I'd find you. Oh, I, I, I pray this will happen. I have been living in the ruins of the old house. But, but you should not be near the house. You must go away from here. For a long time, they tried to find you. The men used to come at night. But that was years ago. They wouldn't know me now. Seeing you near the old house, they might suspect. A stranger come from nowhere. A stranger of your age. No, 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 Bradito. You must go. They would kill you as they kill your father. That's why I'm back, Sancho. Because they killed my father. And I'm going to stay. Then you must go into town like any other stranger. Hey, there is an inn. The inn of San Bonaventure. Hey, you must also change your name. You cannot use the name of Carver in Monterey. You're right. At the inn, I'll be Senor Bradford. Bueno, bueno. But we must not stand here talking. A rider might pass. Come, Bradito. I lead your horse, eh? But you said being near the house is dangerous. No, we do not go to the house. I will show you something that you never saw before. <laughs> Even when you were a little boy. Hey, it's really grow from behind these bushes, huh? But, but this is the base of a cliff. It's solid rock. No, no. Not solid, Bradito. Here, you help me push this big rock here, huh? All right. And... <clears throat> It's a cave. See, si, see, si, but even without the rock, the bushes hide the entrance. Hey, it's best now to leave it open in case you should need shelter, Sally. Let's go in. Uh, wait, I strike a light for you. Uh, now you take the torch from the wall. Sancho, these... these things, I remember them from the house. See, <laughs> see, si, si, Bradito. I say what I could so that one day you could have them. Here, look over here. The portraits of your mother and your father. I never knew this cave existed. Nobody ever told me. Uh, your father wished it so. Only he and I knew. Ah, see. I see now by the portrait your resemblance to him. My father. See. You know, Sancho, I never believed that anything had happened to him. He was strong, and that gave me faith. And you gave me more faith with your fairy tales. No, oh, I never told you fairy tales, Bradito. You don't remember. The stories about El Diablo, the devil himself, and the scarlet cloak who came riding at night to punish the wicked. It's too bad your El Diablo wasn't around the night my father was killed, Sancho. A child builds up a lot of hope in a legend. Bradito, El Diablo was not a legend. He defended the good against the bad. Perhaps you're right. And stories are told often enough, people begin to believe them. Well, they were not just stories. I did not deceive you. Ah. Turn and look at the wall behind you. Masks. Masks in the image of the devil. See, and beneath the masks, a trunk. Open it. Sancho. Open it, Bradito. I know the truth. Scarlet cloak. Black sombrero and a rapier. Uh, do you remember, Bradito, when you were a little child? Bad men who did bad things in this land. Then one morning they would be found dead wearing the mask of the devil who had come to claim them. That was the work of El Diablo. And he lived in Monterey while your father lived. Because, Bradito, your father was El Diablo. El Diablo? Si. And that's why he was killed. 
Because they found out that he stood in the way of their robbing and plundering. And they were strong enough to destroy him, and they will also destroy you. But they thought you must go away, please. No, Sancho. This cave is mine now. And so is my father's rapier. But you have been raised in Boston. What do you know of such a weapon? I lived in Europe, too, Sancho. I fenced with the greatest swordsmen in the world. Fenced with them until I could beat them. Because I knew that someday I must come back here to kill a man with a rapier. Now I have to find that man. Sancho, if I need you, I'll come here. But if you ever need me, ask for Senor Bradford at the Inn of St. Bonaventure. Slept well, Senor Bradford? Yes, very well. Say, uh, what is that mob doing outside? Some kind of celebration? No, Senor, there is much trouble. American gunboats from your country there on the harbor of Monterey have taken down the Mexican flag and put up the American colors. Oh, I don't believe it. Not unless there's war. We have heard nothing of a war, but they say other nations would like to seize California. Oh, that's no secret. Half the world is after this territory. I am Mexican, Senor. But Mexico is weak. And his land is too big. Many of us would welcome the American flag. It is our hope for peace. That mob outside doesn't seem to agree with you. That mob outside is not led by Mexicans, senor. It is led by Americans. Oh, really? See. Si. Say, at times I don't return for the night, think nothing of it. But if I'm ever gone for more than two nights, there's a note for one of your countrymen under my pillow. Please deliver it. See, si, senor. Muchas gracias. Change. They say they brought them gunboats in to protect the country. Protect it from what? I don't see nobody else trying to grab it. Maybe they're going to get more than they bargained for. I got men riding in from all over the countryside. Men with guts and guns. Are you going to join them? Yes, 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 yes. Here come some of them now. Go across the room. Look out there. I'll get her. That was fast moving, stranger. She's fainted. Somebody get some water from the Thank you, Charlie. Right. That gal's Maria Alvarez. There'll be the devil to pay for this. There's always the devil to pay when a mob like this cuts loose. Yeah, but this just isn't a girl, stranger. This is the niece of Don Raymond de la Torres, the richest man in California. Thanks. Come on, miss. Drink this. Oh, uh, Daniel. A horseman almost ran you down. Yes, would have, too, if this fella hadn't grabbed you. Oh, gracias. I will be all right now. Let my horse through. Let me through. Maria. Uh, Maria, what has happened? I was almost trampled, but these gentlemen have saved me. My uncle, Don Ramon de la Torres. Senor? Bradford. I am most grateful, Senor Bradford. Who were the horsemen? It isn't the horsemen you want. Some madman named Daggard has been inciting this mob, or it wouldn't have happened. Right up! I'm here, Don Ramon. I am Turn back! Leave it back for my horse! Who gave you the right to endanger the lives of the people of Monterey? Have you appointed yourself governor of this territory? They changed the flag at the customs house and waited. And you will let the officials determine what action is to be taken. Disperse this crowd at once, or I shall ask the governor to place you under arrest. All right. I guess we made a mistake, man. The governor's job. If you cannot stay in town peacefully, get out. Now move on. Move on, all of you. You should not have come into town, my dear. Daggett is an impetuous fool. I am all right, thanks to Senor Bradford. I have invited him to visit with us this evening. By all means, you will be most welcome, Senor. And we shall try to erase this sad impression of Monterey. It's not Monterey I'm worried about, Don Ramon. It's that man Daggett. He was planning to lead an attack on the customs house tonight. Well, please, do not be so concerned. The mob has scattered. They will drink and gamble, and by night they will have forgotten. Now, come, Maria. I will take you home. Adios, Senor Bradford. Adios, Senor. Until tonight? Until tonight. Sancho. I am 
here, Brady. There's trouble in town. I know, I know. I was there this morning. Senor Doggett finds their anger. He was stopped by Don Ramon de la Torres. But I think he still plans to go through with an attack. I do not think there will be an attack. Not in the town. If there is one, it will be out here in the country. In the country? See, si. I don't understand. Well, the American ships have cannon. They have also taken the cannon in the customs house. A Doggett knows that. An attack would be hopeless. But why is he bringing in armed men from all over the countryside? Well, perhaps to leave the countryside itself unprotected. Uh, do you remember Don Castillo and the senora, your father's old friends and neighbors? Oh, of course I do. They have been receiving threats. Somebody wishes to drive them from their land. There has been no open attack against them because they have more than 30 men working on their place. But tonight, Bradito, Daggett will have those men in town. The old couple will be alone. You're right, Sancho. But they won't be alone. Oh, Bradito, you are only one man. It will take the devil himself. That's what I mean. El Diablo, the devil himself. Tonight I wear my father's scarlet cloak, black sombrero, and his rapier. If the Castillo Hacienda is attacked, it will be protected, just as it would have been 20 years ago, by El Diablo. Let's take just a minute now to mention one or two of the many advantages this program provides for an astute advertiser. It's a Western-type story, utilizing the basic success pattern of galloping horses, gunfights, and high adventure. However, through its authenticity, believability, and imaginative presentation, we have widened its appeal to attract the young and the adult audience. The locale of Monterey, a hundred years ago, which will be kept historically accurate, revives the romantic flavor of beautiful senoritas, colorful habits and costumes, old-world weapons such as the rapier, and interesting characters of Spanish, English, Mexican, and American origin. It gives you a dramatic, exciting radio program, but is even more suited to a filmed television series. The performers have been selected for their ability and experience, and also for their appearance, so that the television picture will bring you most of the same people you are hearing on this record. Our star for both the radio and television programs probably has talked to more people more often than any man who ever lived. The name of Wendell Niles is familiar to everyone. For 20 years, he has announced and performed several times a week on the highest-rated radio shows. The name is already universally associated with a pleasant, sincere, convincing voice. Through these programs... We now associate that familiar name with a likable, virile, adventurous personality who will quickly spring to life in the hearts of millions of Americans. As you listen to the second act, imagine, if you will, a television screen where you can watch this believable, exciting, romantic man of action, the wearer of the scarlet cloak and rapier, as he rides against the evil to bring hope to the oppressed. Returning to Monterey after a 20-year absence, Brad Carver has learned that his murdered father was the legendary El Diablo, protector of the weak and helpless. Through his father's old friend and servant, Sancho, he also learns that an attack by night riders is planned against the neighboring hacienda, donning the scarlet cloak, black sombrero, and rapier that his father wore. Brad and Sancho ride to a hill overlooking the threatened hacienda. The lamps of the hacienda are out for some time now. And still no signs of a raid. They would wait for sleep to come in the house. I hope you're right. Oh, Bradito, I bless myself. Here in the moonlight with your father's cloak and sombrero, I feel that once again I ride with El Diablo. Let's hope the raiders feel the same, Sancho. Uh, There may be many of them. We'll have help. Come on. Where do we go? Down to the corrals to release the livestock. You have a plan? Yes. If they expect no resistance, they'll take the easy approach to the hacienda. That means they'll ride in on the road from town and across the bridge that forged the stream down there. See, see, that is the way they should come. Now, we'll herd the oxen and cattle and horses into that blind path between the hills, just this side of the bridge. When they approach from the other side, I'll charge the bridge. From there on, it's up to you. Bueno, just tell me what to do. I want you to stampede the herd behind me. Drive them toward the bridge. 
In this light, with the sound of the stampede, they won't know what's coming at them. They'll scatter and run. Ah, here is the main corral. Uh, move them out as quietly as possible. I'll get the horses from the stables. You drive them into the blind pass, and I'll meet you there. About ten of them. Look. Coming over the hills. They're carrying torches. Good. They're on the road to the bridge. Just as they approach the far side, I'll make my ride. Turn the stock toward the bridge and stampede them behind me. Then keep after them and keep them moving. See, I understand. And luck ride with you. El dia. Here they come. When you get across the bridge, cut into the hills. I'll double back and meet you near the old missions. See, be careful, Paradito. Now's the time, Sancho. Adios. Yeah! for a little while in the stampede. It was just squeezed a little, that's all. I told you to stay behind the herd. <laughs> See, I know, but I wanted to be closer to you in case they made a fight. Oh, but you were just like your father, just like him. They were frightened. I'll help you back to the cave. No, no, no. You must not go there. Tonight you must be in the company of others, so they will not suspect. But I can't leave you while you're injured. Pratito, you have taken your father's place. El Diablo returns on the same day a stranger comes to the town. They could make much of this unless you spend the evening with others. Yes. Senorita Maria, the niece of Don Ramon de la Torres, invited me to call. Ah, bueno, then you must go there. He is known and respected. It will be perfect. I will take the cloak and sombrero. I'm the rapier. Ah, now you are once again Senor Bradford, a stranger who stops at the inn of San Bonaventure. <laughs> My niece plays that music box incessantly, Senor Bradford. I am afraid we are poor competition. It is so new and exciting, and has come all the way from Paris. Yes, I know. I've seen them there. You have been to Paris? Our Senor Bradford seems to have seen a great deal of the world. I was in Europe about two years ago. I thought I noted traces of European culture. Do you fence, Senor? A little. It's part of a gentleman's training. Excellent. I enjoy the sport. We must try it someday. It is fortunate for me I have the music box to entertain me. Oh, forgive me, my dear. I have been monopolizing the conversation. Now I have some work in my study. I will leave you alone. Why don't you show Senor Bradford the gardens? Perhaps the Senor wouldn't care to. I'd like to see the gardens. They are very lovely. Adios, Senor Bradford. You must honor us again. My pleasure, sir. You must find Monterey... Different from your native Boston, senor. Different in many ways. Do you plan to stay here for a time? Do you think I should? I'm sure my wishes would not influence a man who has seen so much of the world. Are you... Will your family join you here? No, an aunt and uncle in Boston are the only family I have. Oh, I have not known many Americans... The man I am engaged to marry is an official of the Mexican government. Our families arranged it when we were both children. Oh, I see. I hope he isn't riding the horse that's headed this way. No, he's in Mexico. That is probably some friend of my uncle's coming to play chase. Good, because I want to stay here a while longer, Maria. I'm very much taken with this, this garden. That is 
Questo no, signor. Zach, you fool, why do you come here? Let me in. I had to see you right away. Did something go wrong at the Castillo Hacienda? Did something go wrong? Everything went wrong. We were driven off by El Diablo. He's back. Tiger, have you been drinking? El Diablo has been dead for 20 years. Well, he wasn't dead tonight. I saw him as clearly as I'm seeing you. You let yourself be frightened by an apparition? I tell you, the man is dead. You saw him die. Yeah? Well, maybe we were wrong. Maybe we killed the wrong man, or... Maybe somebody's taking his place. Ah, that's impossible. Is it? How about the fellow who tried to make trouble for us in town today? Uh, don't be an idiot. His name is Bradford. He comes from Boston, and he is stopping at the inn. Besides, he is here in the garden with my niece at this moment. And he must not find you here when they come in. Now go. I talk to you tomorrow. I ain't waiting till tomorrow. I'm going to see what I can find out tonight. Sancho. Is that you, Bradito? Is something wrong? Were you in town looking for me? I have been waiting here in the cave. I left De La Torres and rode to the inn. My room had been searched. A note I'd left for you was missing. A note with money for you to get out of California if I were discovered. Oh, then somebody knows about you now, Bradito. Yeah, I'm afraid so, Sancho. Uh, yeah. Got to do something about that leg of yours. Uh, it will be all right in a few days. We haven't got a few days. We've got to get you away from here to a safer place. No, no. You are the one who must go. Someday when the Americans really come, then the land will be safe and you may return. Now, the Americans are here now, Sancho. No, no. I met men returning from town after I left you at the mission. The raising of the flag was a mistake. The command of the ships had a false report of a war. Mexico again controls California. Shh. Quiet, somebody calls. Quickly, Sancho. Get down behind that trunk. All right, Bradford, don't move. Well, this is quite a layout, ain't it? So this was El Diablo's hideout, and you took it over. How did you find this place? I had to look through your room at the inn. And I stayed around until you came. I figured you'd run for cover when you found that note was missing, and I was right. So the devil had a son. Might have figured you'd come back, only you're not going to last as long as your father did. You can what? drop your gun, Senor Dagger. All right, Dagger, I'll take that. Pretty tricky, ain't you? Throwing down on me behind my back. Brave, when you got an unarmed man. Yeah, it didn't bother you when I was unarmed. Take this gun, Sancho. Throw it outside. Why? And throw your own out, too. Oh, Bradito, Do as I say. There's still two of you against one, you know. No, Dagger, just you and me. Sancho won't interfere. Can you use a rapier, Dagger? Yeah. I can use one. There's one on the wall behind you. Under the devil masks. Take it. You've seen those masks in the past, haven't you, Dagger? My father's mark for men like you. Yes, I've seen them. You'll never put one on me. He's right, El Diablo. This is your last mistake. And you are good, aren't you, Dagger? Yeah. Next one, you you won't be talking. I had the pleasure of killing your father. And this blade will do for you. I'm glad to know that, Dagger. Because that's going to cost you your life. This is your finish. You know what they do. Yes. There's a chance nobody else has seen it. I want to look at his shoulder. There must be a rapier mark there. See, si, Bradito, see. Si. No mark, Sancho. Daggett was one of the mobs that killed my father, but he wasn't the leader. And so from now on, you play a game of death in the dark with a, a man whose face you do not know? Yes. But at least I know that the man responsible for the death of my family is still alive. Bradito, Daggett's men will search for him tomorrow. We must bury him. No, Sancho, he must be found with the mark of El Diablo, the mask of the devil. I'll put the mask on him and strap his body to his horse and leave him near the town. They, they will put a price on your head. There's already a price on my head, Sancho. The price of a life for a life. Because men like Daggert must die for every innocent and helpless person they kill. If my father could carry that price on his head and pay it, then so can I. As long as there's injustice, as long as the good people of this country are at the mercy of the lawless, they'll have El Diablo to protect them.
You have just heard An Adventure of the Scarlet Cloak, starring Wendell Niles. Music by Lynn Murray, story by Joel Murcott. Produced by Vic Hunter and directed by D. Engelbach.